Hey guys, before we get this video started, I just wanted to make sure you remember to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, the usual. But I've also got some exciting news coming up. Um, I'm deciding that I wanted to start a website to help you guys learn more about power apps. I've never done something like this before. I've never had kind of a fan base. Um, I'd like to thank my earliest fans the most because, I mean, you guys are really the ones that keep me going and making these videos because without that kind of motivation, I wouldn't be doing that. So um, I wanted to offer you guys some free advanced videos for when my... Uh, um, my website finally comes out because um, these these videos I'm providing um, they're really useful but to some people they're really basic so I want to give some more advanced videos soon um, I'll be teaching like more about user interface user experience and then have a more unified experience across applications as well and I'll actually have some videos actually creating the apps myself instead of just showing you small tutorials and little snippets and maybe someday some of you could do this for a consulting business as well and it, it, it could really take off you know Never know but more on that later you came for something else and not this small announcement but just be on the lookout and stay tuned because it's coming up thanks guys enjoy the video hey guys I'm back again today I want to show you how to make your power apps faster to, to create and also faster to operate as well now if you got too many things in your power apps, sometimes it can be a little bit slow so we're gonna find ways to make it more efficient in the style of operation so it uses less memory but also make it easier for you to create your app so you don't have to keep transitioning between screens um, where there are the same elements across it so let me give you some examples first on what we're doing today and how it's going to be useful so here we've got some text let's say I wanted to um, have a title right so my title for this screen would be I don't know automation dashboard I've been making a lot of automation dashboards lately so that's what's in my head right now. So here's my title, it's called Automation Dashboard. Now, I don't wanna keep going between different screens, so let's let's say I wanna keep going, I wanna to go to this screen, and you know, if it's still the Automation Dashboard, but it, has, it just has different content in it, I don't want to copy this and then paste that as well, and then keep that as Automation Dashboard as the text as well. We want to store this text and then um, display it as well on this screen here. So instead of automation dashboard being here, what you should do is you should have the automation dashboard title in one, one screen right here. So it's just like that right there. But then on your other screen, instead of saying automation dashboard, you should go ahead and delete that and then reference the text on the other screen right here. So label four, it's called label four. You type in label four dot text. There it is, automation dashboard. Now. If I ever decide that I want to change the title screen to something else, automation dashboard made by, um, no, automation dashboard for company A. Now I don't have to go across all my different screens and change the title, but all I have to do is type it in the main screen where all my variables are, and then it changes on the other screens also. There it is, automation dashboard for company A, automation dashboard for company A. This makes it so Power Apps doesn't need to call, keep aggregating more text for um, their labels. Uh, so instead of having label 4 as this text and then label 4 one, uh, underscore 1 as this text, you have label 4 as this text and then your label 4 underscore 1 just references the label 4 table and that uses less memory for Power Apps to store and it makes your apps faster. It's also easier for you code, for, for you to code in um, if you're looking in the long run because I mean you don't have to keep changing the same things over and over and over again. So that's that should be a much better experience for you if you utilize this as well. Now when you guys are working with Power Apps, I kind of want you to think of it as a dynamic Excel because that's that's what it really is actually. Microsoft made a statement about it. I've been reading a little bit of the documentation by Microsoft and really Power Apps is just Excel but in a dynamic form. I mean it uses it uses these like so these text labels they're your cells and then these formula bars it's li there's literally a formula bar over in Excel as well and I mean these are your cells and you can reference the cells over here I have my screen I have text input one text input two. Um, let's just create a new label. Let's ignore these labels for now. I mean, it's basically Excel. So we have our text here for label one. Now let's just take label five right here. We this is our label five. 
we can literally just put text input one plus text input two and I mean it just takes the total value so um, let's play that let's type in 80 and I don't know um, let's go 25 and it just calculates the value for you instantly within the app it doesn't need to reach into any data sources or create some new memory it just adds those up right there in the app so it's really really nice it's basically Excel power apps is Excel an enhanced Excel where you can move the cells around and you know play around with whatever formulas you want and with that to make power apps more efficient I highly recommend you guys store variables so what what does that mean that means kind of like how we stored the title right here and then we referenced it on the other screen what we want you to do is store your variable somewhere and then reference it all over your entire app and that makes everything much easier so let me give you an example right here let's say instead of not 105 but let's say name right this is gonna be someone's name and so okay on this screen I'm feeding in somebody's name let's put the hint text as name that's what they're gonna see if there's nothing in the box uh, let's go ahead and just there as you can see it changed to name but it doesn't record the value okay so if we're taking in someone's name right here we want to store their name as a variable and so we can use it across the entire app itself so let's ignore this and this let's take this button and then it's like a submit button let's make it a submit button and ignore this I will show you how to do that so we have our name and our submit button so instead of hard coding in someone's name like this I'll put your name is Henry so my name is Henry so every time anybody who opens this app up it's going to be Henry every single time we don't want that we want to store this name in a variable so we can reference it anywhere else in the app and to do that it's very easy we just put set name we're gonna call the variable name and then we're gonna set it to text input dot one Oh no, text input one dot text. And that's it. Now the variable name is name. And you can reference that anywhere else. Screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four, screen 100 if you want. So let's see that in action. So instead of hard coding my name in here, your name is, we can put that right there. And then we put the and symbol right there. And we can it, see it recommends it right there, name. So we type that in. And your name is so that's that's what it is so it's not displaying anything right now but that's because we actually never submitted a name so let's go ahead and do that your name is I don't know Bob so the instant I click submit this this uh, label right here references text input one directly so it's going to be instantaneous with no lag at all there it is Bob instantly because power apps is doing that internally so we stored the variable name and we called it Bob and now we can also reference the name Bob anywhere else so let's say we're writing some kind of thing here so let's say we enjoyed our time with you Henry so here it is that's hard encoding the name and that's going to show up every single time we don't want that so let's go ahead and encode it. So it references the variable name. And as you can see, we enjoyed our time with you, Bob. There it is, screen one, screen three. It's the same across the entire application. Very useful for fast application creation. And also um, it makes your apps faster as well. So one differentiation I wanted to tell you guys is the difference between two types of variables. And that's between set and update context. So when you're using set, it's going to be updating the entire application globally. So we can use the set the set variables in screen one, screen two, and screen three. In update context, we're only going to be able to use the variables within the specific screen that you're in currently. Let me go ahead and set this first. Text input one dot text. And the, also the formatting is different. Make sure, because we're creating a record here instead of just setting a variable. 
So set is the variable that we can use globally inside screen one, screen two, and screen three, while update context is the variable that we can only use within screen one. It's not going to work in screen two and screen three. The reason they have this is for set, we can use that globally, obviously that's gonna be really useful, but for update context, maybe you want to lock your variables inside one screen and not have them accessible in different screens and that keeps you really organized. So that's that's the reason you would use update context. Um, if you guys wanna disregard everything I just said and wanna to get to the point, the point is, if you don't know what to use and you don't really mind being a bit unorganized, go ahead and use set, it doesn't matter that much. Um, it does matter once you get more nuanced into your application, but most applications using a global variable and using the set function should be completely fine. Um, yep, so, oh, I'll show you how the update context works. So let's go ahead and throw in a label here. I'll make it a bit bigger for you guys to see. Okay, so we can use the variable name one here, okay? Okay, so uh, that doesn't work right now because we need to update our app. So let's submit Bob1. Honestly, I should have used different text inputs, but that's fine. Okay, so as you can see, name one right here, I put it in there, it works. Screen one, name one, it works. But we go over to screen two, and we try to do the same thing for name one. As you can see in screen two, it doesn't work. It gives me an error. It just doesn't exist. The variable name one does not exist in this screen. But it does exist in this screen, as you can see here, name one. And just to show that, we set the variable name to be global, and that displays Bob1. So in the end, update context keeps your variable within the screen, and it locks it there. While set keeps your variables global, and you can reference them anywhere. Now using these variables within your applications will make it run much faster. And if you've got like one tiny screen with your application that doesn't have much in it, um, you're not gonna see that much of a difference. But once your application gets bigger and bigger with multiple, multiple, multiple screens, it's gonna be really helpful. So you don't have to keep making new ones and being disorganized. When you're making power apps, stay organized, especially if you've got a really big power apps. And even if you've got a small one, because you might want to keep expanding your small power apps and then eventually it'll become a more complex and bigger, um, bigger power app. And you'd want to be very organized for that. So just wanted to give you guys that quick message today on variables and how it can be really beneficial to you in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if it was helpful to you. And just remember, I'm starting my website soon. I love my earliest fans. Any of you watching this are my earliest fans. You guys are what keeps me going. So if you guys want access to my free advanced videos once my website comes out, don't forget to go down below to the description, click on the link, and sign up for my email list because I'm going to be giving you guys some free stuff. You guys are my earliest fans. There's no obligation. I'll be giving it out to you guys once my website comes out. I'm working hard on that for you. So go ahead and click on that link below and I'll see you there when it comes out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.